What's up everyone? 5280 Reefer here. Back at you with another episode. So, in this episode, uh, I did want to take the time and talk about the Aptasia in my tank. I know you guys have seen it in some of my clips. I try to avoid it. Try not to capture it, but it's progressively getting worse and worse. So, pretty much when I set up this tank, um, it was all clean, it was all good. I started getting coral, didn't see anything for a long time. I knew that the LFS I went to had Aptasia, but didn't really think too much of it. I've never really had bad cases of Aptasia before, I've had them here and there, but nothing serious. So I noticed one head of Aptasia um, pop up by one of my ACANs right above it. And usually the Aptasia I saw before didn't really get that big. They tended to stay smaller. But this time around, they got big and it started hurting the flesh on the ACAN. So I was like, you know what? I got to do something about it. Let me try this F Aptasia. It's supposed to be the best because it's like a chalky gunk that you put on top of the Aptasia and you cover the whole thing up and it stays there and it kind of encrusts over it and then you can take the whole thing out. So, and I know that when you do mess with Aptasia, they really spores into the water. And that's why I was like, hey, with this F Aptasia, it like catches the spores. Well, no, no, it didn't catch the spores. Um, I literally saw as I was pouring that F Aptasia over the Aptasia, it shot through the gunk. And I was like, well, here we go. So I didn't think too much of it. I was kind of being hopeful and dumb. You know, I was like, ah, it should be fine. We should be okay. A few months later, that in, like, most of that rock is covered in Aptasia. And these things get huge. So they completely annihilated that frag of Acans I had. And they are encroaching on the only other frag of Acans that I have. And they've already killed off at least two or three heads. So it's, uh, I got to do something about it. I definitely can't keep using F Aptasia because it's just going to make it worse and worse and worse. So I'm going to explain to you kind of the situation that I'm in with my tank. Um... I ended up get my local fish store ended up getting a copper band for me and QTing him for three weeks and it was doing great. It ate food, it was eating frozen, it was eating pellets. I was like, dude, that's phenomenal. You know, it's it's doing all that. That's already a huge plus. So I knew once I got it that I'd be able to keep it alive because I feed my tank very heavy. I feed a lot of frozen food. I put him into a acclimation box into the tank for about three, four days. Nobody really cared, you know, while he was in the acclimation box. But then I ended up putting him into the tank out of the acclimation box. And within five seconds, my giant fat Scopus tank swam up to him and started trying to murder this copper band. And it was the saddest thing I saw. I got really, really ticked off. And there I put, I printed out a bunch of yellow tang pieces of paper, stuck them all over the tank, did whatever I could to stop the aggression. Nothing helped. So I was lucky that um, the copper band was on the top corner of the tank, like kind of just like trying to get away from the Scopus. And I was able to net him up and take him back to my LFS and uh, see that copper band go into his aquarium. And I was kind of jealous. I was like, well, damn. So I have to figure something out. I got to get rid of the Saptasia in my tank. And um, I was like, all right, what are my other options? Well, I can't do shrimp. I can't 
do any shrimp because I have a very large male bird wrasse, and then I have a large female bird wrasse, and then I have a leopard wrasse, and then I have a chorus wrasse, and I have a koi's parrot wrasse. So shrimp are out of the question. They would be just <clears throat> expensive uh, snacks for the fish. I'm not down with that. You know, they're getting fed a lot anyways on a daily basis. Next option would be uh, Bergia. Well, can't really do that either because I have a six-line wrasse and my other wrasses. And those wrasses are very good hunters. And the, it, also another issue is that I have four separate rock structures. So I don't really have any rocks connecting my structures. And I do understand that Bergia are nocturnal. I'm still going to try anyway, but I don't think I'm going to be very successful with the Bergia. So pretty much my only left option is a stripey. And um, I let my LFS know that I wanted a stripey. And he was able to get one. And those suckers are rare and expensive. Um, and it is quite small it's about one inch big um hopefully it's gonna make it in my tank my hopes is that since it is so small it's gonna be able to kind of get into the nooks and crannies of my rock work and be able to hide until everybody kind of calms down and gets used to the fact that he is a tank mate and a part of the tank because i mean my six line wrasse is tiny compared to my other fish my um, big male bird wrasse could easily just inhale him in one go. Um, so that's kind of my hopes. That's where I'm at right now. Uh, he's been in QT for about a week. He's got two more weeks to go. Um, I'm being very hopeful. I'm sure it's going to be fine through QT. I'm just being very, very hopeful that uh, once it does get put into my tank, it doesn't get instantly annihilated by my fish. And uh, that little stripey is going to be able to get down to business in that in my reef. Because those aptasias are absolutely going ham. And I don't really know any other way of fixing the issue. Um, you know, burn it, burn it with fire. But... I wish I could do that, but that's not really an option. Um, and if it was, I'd definitely do it. I'd do it for sure. But we'll see how it goes. Um, I, I do have high hopes for the stripey. And I, as I said, I will be getting some Bergia. I will release them into the tank at night. And I'll release like one or two onto one rock structure, one or two onto the other, so on and so forth. It's just pretty much any of the hiding spots that the the Bergia can get into. My six line Ras can get into all of those hiding spots because he is small, and uh, that's kind of what he was meant to do: was get into small little nooks and crannies and pick at pests and all sorts of stuff like that. I never really thought that Aptasia could be this bad. You know, I've always talked to people and heard of horror stories of Aptasia taking over people's tanks and um, I didn't think I could get there but I am a witness to this now you know um, I guess I was really lucky in my other tanks before or I had a different strain of Aptasia that didn't get really big it stayed small and just kind of bothered things on a surface area like a surface level but it wasn't so big that it could just smother over a coral. The Aptasia I have right now, I mean, they get huge. They're bigger than half dollars. They're, they're pretty big. And there's hundreds of them. There's definitely hundreds of them. And I'm seeing more and more. It's getting to the point where I have some in my sand bed. Um, they're just popping up in my sand bed here and there. I think I've counted about six or seven in my sand bed. I think that's kind of hilarious. But yeah, guys, thanks so much for sticking around, hearing me out. Thanks for watching. And as always, you guys have a wonderful day and keep on reefing.